Today I want to talk to you about something that can transform all of us as citizens and transform our country. But let me start by telling you about this young girl, Akanksha. Akanksha lives in Gurgaon, not very far from here. She studied in a school called Literacy India. She's now currently involved in a distance education program watches movies, hangs out with friends, you know, does all the kind of things that we do at, our, at that age. But Akanksha also does a few other things while she's doing all this. She got together with her, fr with her friends, her classmates, and got the road outside her school repaired. Got the local administration to get that road repaired. This road had been in a bad shape two years, but she made it happen. There's a garbage dump just outside her house. She called in the municipal corporation, got that cleaned up, cordoned off, so that it wasn't a hazard anymore. Big things for a 16-year-old. Extraordinary things, one might say. But I, Actually, there is nothing extraordinary about what Akanksha has done. Nothing at all. This is really what all of us, each one of us, is supposed to do as citizens in a democracy. We are meant to take ownership, take responsibility for our neighborhoods, work with the system to address those issues. So, what is extraordinary about Akanksha is not what she has done, but that extraordinariness comes from the fact that we don't do what we are supposed to be doing. That's what makes her story extraordinary. So why don't we do all these things that we are supposed to be doing? One reason maybe, fundamentally, we don't know that we are supposed to be doing these things, that this is our job as a citizen Second, it might be that we don't know how to do these things. How do you perform this job? You know, we're trained to be engineers, we're trained to be doctors, we're trained to be sports people. But how are we trained to be citizens, effective citizens? And where does this training happen? Where is it happening? In our schools? So, Countries like the United States spend a lot of time, put a lot of focus on this training. They call it citizenship education, where they look at what are the skills, the knowledge, and most importantly, the attitudes that are needed to be effective citizens in a democracy. They uh, also have things like looking at the constitution, their constitution, so that people can understand everyday life, how the Constitution affects them, and that's what makes it the American way of life. They have this massive building, massive, called the Constitution Center, where students come and muck about and have fun understanding what their Constitution means. When I went there recently, I got goosebumps just looking at these students, just massively enjoying being citizens. How do we do this in India? We also look at this training, and it's part of our curriculum. It's a subject called civics. Have you heard of it? I hope so. <laughs> it's part of a curriculum, but let's see how we're doing on that. So, in a recent uh, workshop that I was there facilitating, there were about 100 people, mostly 40-year-olds. And I asked them, how was their learning and experience in their civics class when they were back in school? Most of them said that they had mugged up, gone to the exam, and don't remember a thing. Some of them, admitted to sleeping in class. Mm. 
but all of them agreed that this was the dull subject. Yeah? My experience? In school, I was this really committed student, you know, this overachiever types yeah, who love studying. You know those types? <laughs> That's me, okay? But I have to admit, I don't remember much from my civics class. I must have slept through one, and uh, I, I have to agree, it was the dull subject. That was 25 years back. Cut to today. We at We The People work with a number of students, lots of schools, and when we ask this question, what do you think about civics? Do we find students raving about it and saying this is the most exciting thing that happens in school? No. <laughs> most of them say it is a dull subject. Now this could all be really quite funny and we could laugh about it, but in a democracy, this is an incredible tragedy. It means that every year, scores of students are coming out of their schools uninspired by the massive role they play in a democracy. They're not in touch with the character that is needed to uphold a democracy. And they're not equipped with the skills to work in their neighborhoods, to engage with the state, and make their communities better. This is a crisis. And look at these neighborhoods, communities, villages that we are talking about. They are in dire need of improvement. We face these problems, many problems, sanitation, roads, safety, street lights, many problems, we face them all the time, complain. We think, of course, that the government should do all this. And yes, of course, the government has to do this job. But we have to do our part of the job. No government in the world can deliver good governance without the involvement of its, of its people, its citizens. So look at what's happening. On one side, we have these brilliant, talented young people coming out of their classes yawning that they haven't done anything that was practical in class. And on the other hand, we have our neighborhoods that are crying out for our collective attention. What if we were to do this differently? What if we were to use civics education as a vehicle for transforming our communities, for transforming our neighborhoods? What do you think it would look like? Maybe it would look like this. Azubazu chagallan madhe dive lagalele hote. Mala azun atho tai ki saransa mala phone ala hota, ani saransa mage mulansa khub zora tarada orda salo hota. These students having a great time because they've got the street lights in their town lit up. This was a school in Mazalgaon in Maharashtra. And what they did was, they used their civics classes to look at issues in the town, work on them, work with the local administration, and address them. This is the fun of being an active citizen. This is the fun of really being able to work in our democracy like we're supposed to, like all citizens are meant to do. So what are we trying to do here? How can we make this happen? At We The People, we are working with schools, with teachers, to try and look at what are the, some of the things that we can do to make civics classes the most exciting that you can find. What are we doing? The first that, the thing that we are doing is we demystify the Constitution of India. Fabulous document that defines the character, the values that that stand for being Indian. Now in civics classes, this is usually treated as a historical piece. No connection with what you're doing around here. A historical piece. Some people believe that there's only one copy 
one copy that sits in parliament. Many people haven't seen what it looks like. How many here have seen the constitution of India? Okay, a fair number. Small, but fair enough. All right. So, we must have a look at this constitution. What does it look like? So, here is my copy of the constitution. Yeah? Available in blue, green, yellow, red. Get your copy. Get your copy. This document can help you analyze and understand what's happening around us. Make sense of these things that are happening around us, of current events. What if this copy was brought into our classes? And we looked at this. You want to understand Article 370? You want to look at what does the freedom of speech and expression means? Go to the source document. Do not rely on TV anchors to tell you what you should be thinking. Think for yourself. This document is for you to think for yourself. This document also helps us in resolving our civic issues. It helps us because it gives us the framework of rights, our rights, gives us the framework of the law, and also what the state is supposed to be doing to help us resolve those issues. Let me give you an example. This is a school in Pune called Learning Home. And the students here in their civics classes, as part of the civics curriculum, looked at an issue that was troubling them a lot, which was around street dogs. Now, what do it did while looking at the curriculum and the topics there, they identified how does this relate to this document? Which article is re relevant to the issue of street dogs? They looked at what was the law, what is the act that actually refers or is, gives the framework to this issue of street dogs. They looked at circulars, orders that come out from various departments. Mucking around with this, they then identified who is responsible for making the, addressing this issue. And they found that it was, of course, the Municipal Corporation, went and met them and addressed this issue. This is what they did as part of their curriculum. This is democracy in action. This is the Constitution in action. This is civics in action. And truly, this is citizenship in action. This is the transformation that we need to be making from civics education to citizenship education. Because that's the way we will transform ourselves and our communities, our neighborhoods. What, was, what must we do to make this happen? First of all, our curriculum must focus on you and me, on us as citizens. Yes, the state is important, but the citizen is paramount. Our citizens have to understand what are the skills, knowledge, and attitudes required to be effective so that they learn not only how to deal with issues around them, but what about that birth certificate they have to get later? or anything else, we have to ensure that they're equipped for life in a democracy. That's what we stand for. That's what we are. Our curriculum also has to include practical work. There have to be projects where actually students take up issues, work on them so that they can learn better. You know, there are math projects, there are geography projects. There's no civic project. In a country that's teeming with issues, we don't have a civic project. How's that? We've got to get that in. Third, we must train our teachers. They are the facilitators of this transformation, and we must invest in that training. And fourthly, our schools must imagine themselves, see themselves as centers of citizenship, where students are involved with local communities, are working with the administration, working with other schools as well, to create those communities that we can be truly proud of. This must happen, and it will.
Thank you.